For more than 550 days, a family has faced agonizing pain, searching for their little boy, searching for answers. Michael Vaughn went missing in the summer of 2021. The case heated up late last year with police digging up a home close to the Vaughns and naming people they believe are involved in Michael's abduction. But we still don't know where the little boy is. <laughs> There's a hole. July 27th, 2021. But we keep moving on every day and we don't give up. The day the world stopped turning for one Idaho family. I always write every day what day it is. And it says, be strong, be brave, be fearless. You are never alone. The day a little sister couldn't play with her big brother. She picks up his pictures. I leave this one here. Um, she'll walk up and she'll start talking to him. And she'll get sad and she says, I miss Monkey. I miss him too. A day forever imprinted on the memories of everyone who lives in the family's small, close-knit community of Fruitland, Idaho. Five-year-old Michael Vaughn went missing from this neighborhood behind me. The search for Michael Vaughn continues. We just want our monkey home. Fruitland police say then five-year-old Michael Vaughn disappeared between 6.40 and 7 p.m. on July 27th, 2021. His family says he was last seen down the road from where they live on Southwest 9th Street in Fruitland, and he spoke to multiple neighbors. Every minute counts in these investigations when searching for a missing child. By fall, police said Michael was likely abducted. I want to hear him say, I love you, Mom. <laughs> was the last thing I got to hear. That was the last thing he said to you. <laughs> I told him I'd be home to tuck him in. Multiple agencies, from Fruitland Police and Idaho State Police to Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, scoured the area, searching for Michael on the ground, in the water, from the sky. People from all around the Treasure Valley also helped search for the little blonde hair, blue eyed boy, lovingly nicknamed Monkey. Michael's still missing. He's not home, and we don't have answers. So we keep going. Monkey's sixth birthday came and went last June. That one up top is from Monkey's sixth birthday. And all of the Fruitland Police Department signed the ribbon and brought that. What do you miss most? about him. <laughs> his hugs, his jumping on me, his kisses, mama, when we do this, his inquisitiveness about everything. Just wanting to see the whole world. I want to take him to catch more frogs. With each passing day, Michael's mom, Brandy Neal, holds out hope they can make more memories. She and his dad, Tyler Vaughn, speak to Fruitland police constantly. Darn near daily. And know they're using every resource they can. Their hearts are broken too. Just weeks after Michael's sixth birthday. We've received some recent leads that have put us out in the area again, um, searching more acreage. Fruitland Police Chief J.D. Huff announced a tip in a sea of more than a thousand tips led them back to the area where Michael disappeared. 
Michael's case fell quiet again for a few months until it got very loud on November 11, 2022. A major break in the case at a home just across the road, just half a mile away from this neighborhood where the Vaughn family lives. Police say they were looking for Michael's possible remains at a home on Red Wing Street so close. Brady says she walked there and knocked on the door early on in her search for Michael. No one answered when she knocked. Huff said a quote, very credible tip from someone living in the home led them to believe Michael was buried there. Search and rescue crews used heavy machinery to dig up the backyard of this home on Red Wing Street. Honestly, I didn't really believe it at first. Like it couldn't, it couldn't have been this close. I literally worn my feet to the bone. We are all very emotionally tied to this case. Brandy says police told them to hunker down and to stay away from the excavation. I sat at the end of the road. I watched the trucks leaving with the dirt. But I promised my family, I promised law enforcement, I promised everybody that I wouldn't go over there. It was like day one again. In the first weeks, months, not being able to drive, not being able to think, not being able to do anything. <sighs> Pour yourself into a shower. The next day, after more than a year and a half, police arrested someone they believe was involved in Michael's abduction. Even without finding a body, they charged one of the people living in the home, 35-year-old Sarah Wandra, with failure to report a death. Police, for the first time, saying they believe Michael is dead. Do you understand the allegation that's been made against you? I understand what they've said is not correct. But how could they arrest her without finding a body? Chief Huff could only tell me they had probable cause for prosecutors to charge her beyond just statements made. You're confident that they have more? They can't tell us, but I'm confident in them. The judge sealed the probable cause affidavit and other records, not wanting to jeopardize the high profile case. The Payette County prosecutor said Wandra was on pretrial release at the time, charged with unlawful possession of a gun by a felon. She lives with her partner, Stacy, who's been in the Washington County Jail since May of 2022, accused of the same gun charge. Never seen them, never met them. We left liars in the door. In December, Sarah was committed to the state psychiatric hospital after she was found mentally unfit to assist in her own defense. It's disheartening. It's upsetting. Proceedings are paused until her competency can be restored. But I understand. I understand the process. According to Chief Huff, she isn't cooperating. I want answers. I need answers. But I'd like to sit and have a conversation with her face to face with me. But you can't yet. No, not yet. There will be a time. Crews spent days digging up the Red Wing Street property. They brought human remains detection dogs. All of them alerting to the presence of human remains. Although the remains of Michael Vaughn were not recovered, we strongly believe, based on evidence, that Michael was abducted and is deceased, and that his remains were buried and later moved from the property. In that same December news conference, Chief Huff announced they believe two more people have firsthand knowledge about Michael's disappearance. He said Brandon Shirtliff and Adrian Lucian lived at or visited the Wanderers home when Michael was abducted. We also believe that there are others associated with the Wanderers, Shirtliff and Lucian, who may have knowledge of Michael's abduction. Police believe Lucian is bouncing between Ohio and California. Public records show he has a lengthy criminal record in multiple states. Shirtliff also has a long rap sheet. In fact, court records show he has a warrant out for his arrest in Canyon County for violating probation, which Chief Huff knows about. From CUNA, Shirtliff's mom told us he now lives in North Dakota. Via Facebook Messenger, she also told us in early December, investigators and cadaver dogs were at her house for days. He is not running. He has nothing to hide and we have all been cooperating, his mom wrote. A week after releasing their names, Fruitland police said they made contact with Lucian and Shirtliff. However, they haven't charged the men or issued any arrest warrants. While Huff wouldn't comment on why, 
He says he's confident arrests will be made in this case. It's not fair if you have information about Michael and you've watched us for this past 545 days and you haven't said a damn word. And we have to wait and wait and wait and still take care of our family and our lives. Somebody needs to say something and they need to start talking. As investigators press on, Chief Huff says they continue working closely with the Payette County prosecutor. You can't take one of our most precious citizens from us and ever expect us to stop. I hate these words, but we will bring him home one way or another. We'll never give up. While they wait for answers, these are every single card, kind note um, that has been sent to our family. Support from their community and from all over the world. New Zealand, little Kiwi for Michael when he comes home. Helps their world slowly turn again. Michael is still missing. We do not have answers to where he is. Please. Please keep sharing his beautiful smile, his beautiful face. He's out there somewhere and we need him home. Don't forget about him. Multiple status hearings have been set for Sarah Wandra with another scheduled for February 6, which we will of course be covering. Meantime, Chief Huff believes they'll be doing more searches. A week ago, he posted on Facebook saying they are following up on new information. While searching the home on Red Wing Street, he said investigators recovered several pieces of evidence. Some were sent to a private DNA lab for analysis, which takes time, as everything has with this ongoing active investigation. Huff told me, quote, I'll continue to ask for patience as we continue to seek justice for Michael. This is the toughest thing for families of missing children. It's the not knowing, right? Because they can't ever move on. No matter what police say, no matter what the, you know, guesses are, the suspicions are, it doesn't matter. This family wants answers. They want Michael back, no matter what. And they need to know that um, they're gonna get those answers. Since the beginning of this case, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, as I mentioned earlier, has supported the Vaughn family and law enforcement. The center's communications director, Angeline Hartman, always encourages families to speak out and bring attention to the case, advocate for their kids, just as Brandy Neal and the Vaughns have done. Hartman says every missing child case is different, but in 90% of them, the child is found whether it happens quickly or takes a long time. Even if a child is not found in the first couple days, keep looking, every minute counts. Hartman says it's important to take the case seriously right off the bat, those are critical times. It's the responsibility of everyone in the community to help bring that child home. Hartman says children leaving on their own make up the majority of cases, followed by family abductions, so so-called custodial cases. What police say happened to Michael, a stranger abduction, with no connection to the family is extremely rare. Hartman doesn't want to scare families, but she does want to remind them to always be careful, despite where they live. It only takes a second, right? And we don't know what happened. Did it take a second? Did it take 10 minutes and that was 10 minutes that, you know, just nobody was paying attention? I mean, this is a, a community where children and all children should be able to play outside in any community. And this is so heartbreaking to think, to just imagine that he was out there playing, searching for, for playmates. Hartman says they're so impressed by the way Fruitland community banded together and wrapped their arms around the Vons and continues to do so. She encourages everyone to keep supporting the family as they wait for answers because it's easy for them to feel alone.